it's going. And um, with that said, we'll uh, go ahead and jump into it. Welcome, everybody. This is our um, the second town hall we've done, and the, um, we're throwing the uh, core value awards onto it as well, which we did last year. Um, so if you didn't attend last year, this is a venue that was kind of born during COVID. Um, prior to COVID, we would have a user conference, and it was a great time to interact with people that use Fleet Commander today. Uh, sometimes we'd invite people that were considering using Fleet Commander. We would invite vendors, uh, other partners that we work with. Um, but in, in light of COVID and, and travel restrictions, um, we launched this last year and got a lot of positive feedback from it. And so um, we're going to uh, hopefully share with you just a little bit about, you know, behind the curtains of, of who is Agile Fleet, how do we operate, what are our goals, uh, you know, kind of what's our corporate culture and things of that nature. So hopefully you get something out of it. and you know, maybe we spur something to change in your fleet environment. So that's the goal today. Um, so welcome. Um, just kind of getting started. My name is Ed Smith. I'm the president and the founder of Agile Fleet. Um, for those who uh, don't know me or my personality, I would prefer to be at your fleet asking you questions about the vehicles out in your lot or what's all the paper on the desk there. Um, uh, I am vaccinated and boosted and all that fun stuff. So if you do want to invite me out to see your fleet, if I can help in any way, I'm more than happy to. And I believe other members of our team could do that as well. So I'd love to come out there and see your fleet when the time is right for you and we could do it all safely. Um, but for 2022, for starters, uh, we're virtual and appreciate you joining. Um, we have a, a lot of different people attending today. So we've got uh, most of the members of our team, uh, except for those that had other commitments. Um, we've got a lot of users of the Fleet Commander uh, software that are on the line. Um, I believe we've got some people that are considering using Fleet Commander in the future. They wanna get a vibe for uh, who are we. Um, we do have some vendors and suppliers um, that uh, are scheduled to attend. I haven't seen them join uh, all of them. Like I haven't seen everybody. And then also some fleet industry partners, those that uh, represent associations that are in the fleet community. And the whole idea is just to get people to know us so that um, you know you know how better to use us as a resource and that you can, um, you know, Basically, um, you know, we, um, you, you feel comfortable working with us in the future. So, uh, lots of lots of attendees. Um, when we've done this in person, um, uh, one of the things we got the most positive feedback on, or the most questions about, was they said, "Oh, I loved hearing a story about how that company got started." And so, I like to share it um, for those that don't know. Uh, it's a pretty simple story. The company is about 21 years old now. And at the beginning of our company, we were purely focused on vehicle sharing and right sizing. So um, it, the idea came about, I used to work for the Federal Aviation Administration and they needed a reservation system to manage a bunch of airplane things. And at the time the internet was fairly new and I did a little quick search and found out that there was a guy who, um, he had one airplane that he shared amongst three or four of, their, four of his friends and it was such a pain in the butt to manage that one resource with five people that he built a little reservation system for it. And so um, when I left the FAA, I said, hey, there's something about that. As soon as uh, when we took that, uh, that little reservation system he had for one airplane and we put it into the FAA where they scheduled hundreds of thousands of things, the amount of people and uh, that went away and didn't need to focus on that it was, you know, was dramatic, right? Lots of cost savings. The amount of data they had available when you did it right to manage their resources, uh, you know, grew uh, tremendously. So there was so many, uh, so much value in having a simple reservation system that we kind of said, hey, there must be something to this. Uh, let's go look at other things you can schedule, and that's how we ended up in Fleet. So here we are, kind of fast forwarding um, 21 years later. Um, now we are managing um, about 350,000 or so drivers uh, across Fleet Commander. Um, about 80,000 vehicles are managed in the system and we do about half a million reservations annually. Um, and none of that data would count, you know, the customers that a few of them host themselves, so we, we don't see the data at all. So um, we've grown quite a bit, all from a simple idea uh, that was born from one person, uh, five people sharing one airplane. Um, and I think you guys know the value proposition of the sharing side of things. And then over time, as we started to build that reservation capability, there were people that said, but I I already have a, a system that does this in fleet. Any chance you could build that capability into fleet commander so they don't need two systems. 
So for those that we couldn't convince to integrate the two systems together, we started to build in some rudimentary maintenance capabilities and some fuel management, risk management, things of that nature, uh, integrated with GPS telematics devices, put in accident tracking and things of that nature. So the products uh, kind of morphed over time, but it all started back in 2000 with a pretty simple concept of if you can share vehicles, you really increase the utilization and drive your cost down. Um, and then also the fact is that we streamline a process that's always been uh, very, very time consuming and uh, uh, you know, kind of a pain for people. So that's kind of how we got started. And um, you know, we've grown quite a bit and we'll talk more about some of that growth. So today we're gonna focus on some of the highlights we have for 2021, um, what's ahead for 2022. Um, and then we'll get to the core value awards and why, what are our core values and why do we have them? And then um, we'll open up an uh, open forum, let a few, there's a few people that are gonna uh, talk about some innovative things they're doing with their fleets. Um, and then um, we'll kind of monitor the chat. So I think you've got the capability to send the message in chat. So if you've got questions or things we might wanna uh, touch at the end of the meeting, by all means, you know, pop those into the chat window. So um, with that said, let's kind of dive into 2021. So first and foremost, when we started this company, we, uh, you know, you try to come up, what's a name for a company? And you say, oh, well, we really control access to vehicles. Let's call us Agile Access Control, right? And so that's what we did. We thought we'd be the first name in the phone book and what have you. So that's how we came up with Agile Access Control. Um, over time, Access Control took on a whole new name. Our new, it's, now it's uh, Access Control to buildings and gates and things of that nature. And then also every time we would answer the phone and slur our words, everybody thought we were saying asshole. So we said, let's get away from that really quickly. So we quickly ended up at uh, Agile Fleet for those that worked with us for many years, um, for at least the last five years, that's probably all you've known us by is Agile Fleet. But now we're officially Agile Access Control Incorporated is no longer exist and now we're Agile Fleet Inc. And why I even bring it up is in case you ever hear that name Agile Access Control Inc. Um, we don't uh, go by that name anymore. The name was changed, but nothing changed. And the employees that were here, the leadership, the ownership, the control of the company, your tax ID. So that's important to your contracts people that they know that and we can give them a letter that says that. Um, and then also if, if anybody needs any documentation to kind of talk about the transition, we've got a letter we can send out in a, a new W-9. So for those that we already work with, um, that might be important to you for others that are joining, maybe not so much, but we are now Agile Fleet. And we do have a new phone number. Um, we transitioned our phone system early last year. Um, we did have some people call us and say, are you still in business? Or email us and say, are you still in business? Because we can't get through to you on phone. So um, we everywhere that you see our contact information, you'll notice the new number. One of the uh, big things that happened in 2021 when a lot of organizations were downsizing and people were leaving and just going into this economy of I don't wanna work anymore type of a thing, we actually added 18, uh, eight new team members to our team. So um, you know, from the marketing and front office uh, folks to our development team, to our uh, client success team, to implementation team, and also to our system administration team. So uh, in most cases, what we're doing is building additional capabilities at all of those. We're trying to get more developers so that we can uh, you know, speed up the time to market for anything that our customers need and for new capabilities and things of that nature. Um, and so we brought on eight people. We did, um, you know, people like Matt Wade that you may have worked with in the past. Uh, Matt retired, so uh, Matt is doing well for those that are interested. And we had one or two other uh, changes, but um, for the most part, our team grew uh, last year and I'll show you our plans for growing this year as well. But the new team members are great. One thing that uh, we get in um, bringing some of this talent on is both Steve and John come with a wealth of fleet experience that's important for our team. So the more fleet experience we can have in our team, um, the more that we can uh, you know, kind of commiserate with you on some of the things that are, are uh, you and the fleet industry have to um, deal with day to day. So, um, so that's great. And then the, um, the last thing is, you know, just on the marketing side of things, I know that if you're using our application, that's not a side of the company you normally think about, but um, the marketing does a couple things for our company, just um, that you can appreciate. We're trying to put out a, a consistent look and feel. 
Um, but the other thing is we're trying to educate the community so that they know that products like ours exist out there and they would um, potentially come join the fleet community community. But if you ever um, have a colleague that's struggling sharing their vehicles or right sizing or they uh, have some light maintenance capability or uh, needs that they have in their product, um, by all means, a referral is uh, the way that we would prefer to have people walk through our front door as opposed to us beating them over the head with our marketing messages. So if you do have referrals or anybody, uh, we know they're coming from someone that we trust and we work with and uh, you somewhat vetted them. So we, uh, any chance you um, have an opportunity to share your story with them and see if it's a good fit, um, we, we uh, like to have that. Okay. So, um, for those that are relatively new or haven't met everybody on our team, uh, you probably talk to a lot of us or interact with us, um, whether you're a vendor, supplier, customer, prospect. Um, just wanted to put some faces to the names on our team. Um, so uh, a lot of our team has been here for more than 10 years now, um, and I've gotten to really um, a good rapport with you. And so um, I can't say enough about the team. All of our teams are growing, uh, implementation and support teams. Um, you've got uh, Steve uh, added this year, and then we've got a, a new person started in uh, two weeks. And our engineering team has grown um, with Tim and Kepner joining the team in the last year. Um, so that's great. Garrett's been added to our sysadmin team. So um, we're really kind of gearing up to um, just, uh, you know, accommodate the growth that we see happening in the future and then make sure that we've got, you know, full redundancy at every single position so that we don't have any hiccups or uh, any discontinuity in the services that you get. So. Uh, really excited about the team we've built um, and then also where we're going in the future. So um, lots of those folks. And some of the people that are in the company have uh, kind of uh, taken on a new role. They've kind of uh, moved up. We call them uh, elevated through the organization. So, uh, you know, the, the two prominent ones, Phelps is now um, a vice president of uh, the company of Agile Fleet. So um, congratulations to Phelps. He's um, uh, still oversees the implementation and the uh, you know technical support organizations, but he's really kind of my right hand man and um, can do basically any function that I can do. So that's awesome. And then uh, Alexis, if you've uh, any worked with any uh, kind of initiative like a custom project or reports or billing or things of that nature that's unique to your organization, you've probably already interacted with Alexis. We've consolidated the design functions of our engineering team and our development functions uh, back into one and Alexis leads that team and uh, all the folks that are underneath that. So congratulations to both of them. Uh, kind of in the vacuum behind Phelps, um, Ian has stepped up, Ian Wade has stepped up to a bigger role in our support and uh, organization and then playing a much bigger role in things like testing. And then anybody that's new to our, um, any new clients that's coming on, just to uh, keep projects moving along, Helen is kind of moving up into a project management role to just kind of keep the projects um, all kind of in the same formula. Um, she's not doing the actual implementation on all the projects, but she's making sure we're we're staying in you know in our formula, have our schedules, you know what we're all trying to accomplish. So, um, so the team is um, growing, and uh, some of the team is bubbling to the top. You don't know who our customers are. We currently have about 210 uh, unique customers, um, and a unique customer might be uh, a, you know a small community college where they have one location and uh, you know two dozen vehicles. It could be the entire uh, an entire federal agency like the EPA. Uh, it could be an entire state government like Michigan or um, you know, other other states that we work with. So they range quite a bit in size. You know, there's 210 unique ones, um, and uh, you know some of them have uh, you know pretty straightforward uh, needs with regards to what they're trying to do with Fleet Commander. Some of them are pretty diverse um, and lots of extra pieces bolted onto the side of the product to make them better. One thing we're very proud of uh, that is I think about the best rate that I've ever heard of in a software company is uh, from year to year we have a less than a 2% um, turnover rate, meaning people that don't renew to keep using Fleet Commander. So. Uh, it's kind of like we've you know addicted them somehow, but they're absolutely getting value out of it. When we do lose a customer, it's almost entirely because of the fleet has been disbanded or it's been turned over to an outside rental agency or something along those lines. Um, rarely, you know, we try to make sure that our products are fit before we even bring people on board, so we don't lose them because it's not a fit typically. 
um, and customer service. I think you guys know we go over the top to provide customer service that's going to keep our customers here. So we're really excited about um, the growing customer base that we have. Um, and if I don't mention it later, we don't go throw 20 salespeople at it and try to grow at a couple hundred customers per year. That just wouldn't be our culture. It wouldn't. We'd lose. We'd kind of lose who we are. Are. So, for example, this year our target, and last year our target was about 25 new customers, and we brought on 25 new customers. Um, this year our target's about 30 new customers. So you'll be hearing about them as they come along, and I'm sure some of them will reach out to you and say, how do you do this, or how do you do that, or uh, they may even ask for a reference um, as they're considering using our product. So appreciate those that um, support some of the new customers that come on board with us. Uh, our customers are across many different segments. So um, you might say, well, oh, I don't care. Um, so one is, you know, hopefully you see a segment um, for the customers that are working with us that is represented by you, right? So that you're not just a one-off in your little world. Um, but the other thing from our point of view is, you know, there are nuances between how a utility fleet operates and how education does and how government does. And part of it's just because that's how they've always done it in those different segments. But if you were to call us up, for example, and ask a question like, how do your customers do billing, right? And so if a utility customer calls the next utility customer and says, how do you do billing? They're going to say, we don't. We just own the vehicles and they use them when they want. But that's not a best practice, really, right? Because people aren't conscious about how they're using a vehicle and you know they're not trying to be efficient. Um, education, on the other hand, they might bill out for every single use, or it's a lot of times the government as well. So when you reach out to us and you ask us a question like, what is the best practice for billing? Even if you're in a utility space, we might say, well, in the utility space, here's what a lot of people do. But in education, they do this. In government, you do this. And here's why you might want to consider doing that. So we can get some of these uh, fleet management best practices from different market segments kind of at least communicated to you to consider, right? Because there's good ideas um, in each of them. So we encourage you to reach out and ask us if you've got simple questions about fleet. Um, there's several of you on this call that I reach out to you and say, how do you do this? And a lot of times I'll hang up the phone with you and I'll call someone in a different segment and say, how do you do this? Right. And so uh, we, we, we're pretty happy that we have a pretty diverse market um, segments. And again, in that government space, we have federal, state, and local government. So even though it's half the customers, uh, a very local government would be very different than, say, someone at a federal government level who has unique um, say Department of Energy reporting requirements. So that's kind of who our customers are, our clients. Kind of in 2021, um, so uh, a couple things about the company, you might hear us say it over and over again, and it's part of uh, how our core values were born. Um, the company is run, it's been about two years now, under a management framework we call the Entrepreneurial Operating System. And so, um, Basically, it basically it's a process where you bring in outside consultants and they first kind of help you define who you are, what's your what are your core values, what do you want to be, you know, what's your plan for the next year and your next three years and the ten years, and you kind of lay those out and you get everybody marching in the same uh, direction, and then you also. Um, you know, you, you have a regular meeting cadence, um, so maybe once a week to plan exactly what we're doing and are we on track with our quarterly goals or annual goals. So uh, we've added a lot more kind of discipline to that, but um, rest assured, um, the biggest part of EOS is making sure that if we ever do have an issue come up, maybe it's in a client support issue or there's a technical problem that keeps recurring, that we get to the bottom of that particular issue and we address the root cause of that issue and try to get it solved and go make it right, right? So EOS is a really big part of that. Um, and if uh, just to give you a feel for that, uh, prioritize, identifying and prioritizing any issue that exists in the organization is um, takes up about 80% of any of the meetings that we focus on kind of planning for our company. Um, the other stuff's kind of on autopilot because we're getting more and more regimented procedures. But EOS is a pretty slick way to do things. If you have a super dysfunctional organization, you might want to go look up entrepreneur operating system, see if it's something that will work in your environment. We just think the world of it uh, here at Agile. 
Uh, really excited that we were the winner of the uh, 2021 Iowa State's Customer Service Award. So there were um, dozens of people that applied for their awards out of the procurement department, and we won that. And we've got the little trophy to show for it. So um, thank you to them for taking the effort to do that. Um, it, it, you know, there's a lot of pride on our side to get something like that, and it just makes us want to be better um, and get the next one. I believe we've got the highest net promoter score in the fleet industry. That's kind of a benchmark across all different uh, industries um, about how well your customers want to do business with you, how much they like you and how much they would recommend you to another client. Um, that's been consistently high um, and we continue to really focus on that um, through our client success department, making sure that um, we're going back and uh, keeping everybody happy and doing what, what uh, our customers need us to do for them. Um, we've continued through either conferences or, you know, every month we do these, we call Q and A sessions where we kind of just, we're out there to help share information with the fleet community, whether it's on policy or utilization or how to launch vehicle sharing initiatives, things of that nature. We're trying to just share information with the fleet community. And we also will provide a forum. If anybody else wants to share information, we'll set up the conference and do that for you. So uh, that's something we've done throughout 2021, and I think everybody at the company enjoys supporting that initiative. <clears throat> and then we've continued to invest in our product. So there are a lot of products that just sit stagnant and don't change. Um, that's not the case. Our whole engineering team is always uh, trying to make our product better. Um, we had two uh, kind of major releases in the year, and uh, there's probably hundreds of changes in a software release. The, one of the latest ones was one earlier in the year was called version 5.7. Um, it really um, had a lot more kind of out of the box billing algorithms um, using the best fleet management practices that we know of. Um, so as soon as you start using our product, you can sign up for one of those. Just configure it to use that uh, algorithm. <clears throat> We've enhanced the data that's available on our dashboard just to make it even easier to kind of see your fleet at a glance. We've built in a lot of capabilities to really maximize the use of your vehicle. So in a reservation system, if someone doesn't pick up a vehicle, the vehicle is still consumed. So we've made uh, a couple different tools to either go ahead and manually cancel those, a bulk cancellation tool, or better yet, uh, go ahead and automatically cancel that vehicle if they don't pick it up within a certain window uh, that you deem is uh, the time they should cancel it. So <clears throat> definitely helps on the, um, on the uh, improving the utilization rates of your vehicles because you free up the vehicles otherwise would have sat idle if they weren't being managed uh, otherwise and being canceled. Um, let's see, we prevent, uh, one of the things that we do is in our system, we communicate and enforce a lot of policies. So uh, in the past, we uh, managed a lot of information about drivers, but yet uh, we would still let people walk up to a kiosk even with an expired license and check out a a key, right? So really bad idea. So there are lots of other ways we could have prevented them from even making a reservation and getting into the system. But now we um, are basically kind of do a hard stop where, nope, your license is expired or your license is suspended or something else is preventing you from having access to check that vehicle out. So that's all automated now. And obviously there's lots of ways to communicate that. So a lot of people had asked for that for quite some time. Uh, we built in a lot uh, to our maintenance product. Um, so in our work order system, our, our parts management, parts markup, uh, dashboards, things of that nature. Um, we continue to add reports and enhance reports that we've got. And um, one of the things that you'll notice, I'll talk about it in a slide or two, is um, we've been doing a technical refresh activity for our entire product. And that took up about, uh, takes up, uh, it's planned, takes up about 40% of all of our development efforts. So we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. The latest software that we put out, just to kind of give you cadence, uh, this has gone over the last month or two. Um, so it focused a fair amount on uh, the way that we're doing business these days. We've got uh, fleets where entire motor pools are running throughout the state or maybe back at the home office, but the fleet staff aren't there. So vehicles are coming and going and being reserved, checked in, checked out, um, and there's nobody there. And so to support some of those and provide even better visibility than we've had before, we've built in a few capabilities like um, now when something's late being picked up or returned, we can send additional notifications out to people that say, hey, wait a second, something funny is going on here. 
um, and it will notify the admins and the supervisors. Um, and, and then also there's some additional auto and assign enhancements to how to handle it if someone goes and asks for a vehicle and there's not one available, that helps. And then the uh, self-registering uh, your ID cards at a kiosk, so that's something that uh, in the, the easiest way to access a vehicle in our system is you walk up and you just scan your university or your employee badge and you gain access to the system. In the past, you've had to register that card with your fleet staff the first time you use it. So you walk up and say, please associate this card with my fleet commander user. Now we make it so that if you've got a card and you've got a valid login, you can walk up to the kiosk, log in, and then register that card, and that card now will forever be associated with you, so you can use that going forward. So you don't have to go up to fleet staff anymore. Again, that's to facilitate fleet staff that are sitting at home on their deck, drinking a cup of coffee, looking out the sunset while they're uh, doing their work. They're not at the office anymore. Um, a fair amount of, uh, again, additional maintenance capabilities in this last release, some notification tool enhancements, um, more flexible email routing that, um, gets around any needs to do things like whitelisting or uh, makes it look like a, the email might be coming from someone it's not supposed to come from. Um, you know, we control the to and from addresses a little bit better than we have in the past. And uh, lots of other enhancements, but again, our tech refresh is about 40% of that effort. Okay. So the whole gist there again, hundreds of feature enhancements. Um, those are just a couple that are in each release and the, the product does continue to grow. Um, one of the biggest things that we haven't talked a whole heck of a lot about, um, but is, like I said, taking up about 40% of our resources, which, you know, by the time we're done here, we're talking millions of dollars, um, is we are modernizing the entire software platform that, that uh, Fleet Commander is built on. So the, the earliest parts of Fleet Commander were built 20 years ago, and we've uh, evolved to, you know, meet all the security requirements and to, you know, accommodate browsers and things like that but we haven't done a wholesale change of all the underlying technology. So starting in about 2019, we started that effort. And um, basically we're going through and we're taking the old software language that it was written in and writing in a brand new software language that we know has uh, is kind of future-proofed, has a, a longevity in front of it, so that we don't get to the point where all of a sudden we get a message from Microsoft that says, hey, by the way, your platform's gonna expire in 18 months. What are you gonna do about it, right? So um, so we started that effort to modernize everything in uh, late 2019. Um, and the core part of our product um, will be done in about uh, like, like December, January-ish timeframe. We'll be through the development cycles and we'll wrap up the testing of that. But for those that use Fleet Commander today, um, we have been modernizing this, uh, uh, kind of changing the tire on the car as the car's going down the road. Um, our goal is to make it so that you don't notice anything other than uh, the products keeps working. Um, we've made it um, you know, kind of seamless to you. We intentionally haven't changed things along the way, like renamed button or changed functionality. We're just trying to modernize everything. And just to let you know, that takes a lot more effort than what our competitors or others in the fleet space have done, where they've, for example, said, thrown out the old product and say, hey, over the next couple of years, you need to transition to this new system that we're building. And by the way, that's a painful and time consuming process for you. So some of them take about 18 months to switch from the old product to the new one entirely. Um, there's other companies that uh, have basically said, we'll, we'll continue to support, or that old product will still be there, but we're not gonna ever fix any bugs or anything. But if you'd like, you can buy our product again and we'll transition you over to it, and then we'll give you a 5% discount for doing so. Um, so uh, unlike, you know, we're not uh, making anybody buy this product again. Um, we're basically refreshing it in place. Uh, we've got a new platform. The new platform helps us develop faster, helps us take advantage of uh, like uh, third-party tools that might plug into this to add more value. Um, so lots going on to just uh, behind the scenes to keep that product up and running um, and about the, uh, Again, 40% of all of our effort is uh, going into that particular effort. So from time to time, we get a question is, hey, what is all my uh, software maintenance? Uh, why do I have to pay for software maintenance? Um, one of the things is, so we keep, you know, we can pay for resources to keep you know, enhancing the product. And the other one is to um, do things like this tech refresh. So um, tech refreshes are nothing new. Um, 
you might not appreciate it, but Firefox, uh, you know, all the browser, Edge browsers, the Internet Explorer, over time, they've changed behavior that is, breaks things in any software that exists. And software vendors have to continually scramble to keep that up to date. So you might not appreciate some of the nuances of what it takes to keep a product out there and running, but um, we stay well ahead of it. Um, we have uh, worked with other partners on uh, on platforms where they've basically given us 30 days notice that said, unfortunately, our product's going away because Microsoft doesn't support it anymore and we didn't know about it. So um, I think we're being very proactive in that and um, that effort's just about done. Another thing that we've done over the last year in 2021 is we basically uh, upgraded all the hardware in our hosting environment. Um, so we uh, we always monitor all the resources in our environment and we replace them on a regular cycle. And then we say if we get to a number like 40%, if we ever hit 40% utilization on the CPU, we start you know, raising the flags and saying, hey, time, time to upgrade and get a higher powered hardware in there. So um, again, we've done it pretty much unbeknownst to um, or you know with with the proper planning but you know normally it's uh you know a midnight to 5 a.m type of thing with announcement going out to our customers in advance where we'll basically replace all that hardware um overnight or at a time frame when it's not going to inconvenience folks um, but we're always keeping that that hardware current we've done that we've actually increased the amount of assets we have in our hosting environment we've upgraded our firewalls to take advantage of all the latest security that we can possibly take advantage of um, and we actually did a transition to a whole new facility um, this past year. And again, that was something that happened um, overnight in a time frame when um, basically our sites were not up, you know, people weren't using our site, so the impact was minimal. So um, so our sysadmin and uh, the development teams, um, a lot of times when there is any type of impact uh, that could uh, be adverse to you, they're staying up later, they're doing it after hours to try to limit any impact that you might have. So. And again, all of our security tools and processes are um, always being uh, kept up to date. Okay. So uh, probably the biggest change in um, for the past year is the changes and how vehicles are being used, right? And um, so uh, you know, our system through you know the telematics data that feeds into feeds into it, or uh, fuel data, or uh, the reservations check in the check out. You know the data clearly tells you what the story is and um, so hopefully you're taking advantage of reports or um, if you're considering a system you know what type of reports and the value of the reports are that are available through our system um, so uh, basically we've worked with many many fleets to say what should you do and what are you doing we're going to hear about some of those in a few minutes um, we know that vehicles and technology were hard to procure like for us to get kiosks for you, for example, went from two weeks to three to four months. So we had to do things differently on our side. Um, but keep in mind, remarketing costs are an all-time high. So a product like ours where we can maximize utilization and sell off vehicles that we know aren't being used, um, it makes a product like ours you know, more valuable than ever, right? So um, 2021 clearly kind of hit us over the head and said, hey, if we're ever going to get rid of those vehicles, now's the time. Um, and we've got we've got an answer to well how about if it, I can't get new vehicles uh, we can address that if we have a conversation offline. Saw some really smart transitions where people took department-owned vehicles and moved them into pools just because they're going to get higher utilization. Um, job functions like assessors and inspectors and social workers they're not going out on the road anymore so let's take those department vehicles and put them into a pool. And then some really clever ways to use our system uh, in this new world where everybody's working remote. Um, I, hopefully we've got Aaron on the phone. Aaron's going to speak to that um, at the end of our presentation here. All right, let's skip that slide. Aaron will speak to it later. Um, so I, could, I would just encourage you, um, if you're kind of wondering uh, what data would I look at in a system to see whether I've got too many or what I might do based on COVID changes or work from home changes, um, just pick up the phone, you know, give me a call, give our client success team a call, Any, anybody will get you to the right resource and we'll try to help you in and tell you what others are doing in that, in that space. So really wanna make sure you take advantage of that. Um, the other thing we just might be able to help you do, you might say, hey, I, I can sell a vehicle, that's gonna save me 10,000 bucks because I'm gonna, I'm gonna get paid 10,000 bucks for that vehicle. We can help you realize that no, the story is a lot bigger than that. You're gonna get $10,000 for selling that vehicle but if you don't replace that because you got higher utilization, that's probably $5,000 a year. So over 10 years, 
you got the plus ten thousand bucks and you save probably five thousand dollars a year for ten years that's sixty thousand dollars by getting rid of one vehicle over ten years so um, sometimes just telling that story and realizing how big the impact is or a little change you can make um, will really um, make some of the decisions you need to make a little bit more obvious. Okay, so what's ahead? I'll try to pick up the pace here. So our team is going to grow in 2022. We have nine new team members slated to join us. Uh, one started in January, one starts in uh, mid-February. We're really gonna try to increase the capacity of our development team mature our product management uh, uh, processes so that when you say, hey, could you send me your five-year roadmap? I can, we can give you a much better answer than we have in the past for things like that. Uh, a lot more focus on our hosting and recovering capabilities um, for those that have like really stringent return operation requirements. Um, <clears throat> support new clients. So again, we're gonna add 30 new clients and then uh, more support to our vendors and partners. That, I'm not sure I haven't seen them join, but for example, integration with RTA, a maintenance product, um, integration with additional GPS products is, is on the books for um, for this calendar year. Okay, we plan to have uh, development cycles wrap up on three, the next three releases. Um, so our test and release come, comes uh, shortly after that. So two or three releases by the end of the year with a lot of uh, emphasis on reservations, maintenance, integration with external systems, um, and then anything that unique that comes up from you know, unique needs to, um, to a client. Um, let's see, as far as uh, uh, user conference plans, so just um, if uh, you are currently a Fleet Commander customer, um, we do, we're trying to test the waters to see if we think we could get people to attend something in the fall. Um, we, they've always been a great success for those that have attended and for Agile. Um, in the past. So um, look for an email from uh, back around January 10th from us just saying, would you be interested if it were in the Washington DC area and uh, give us any feedback and um, you know, any vendors or anybody else that suppliers that want to attend to that to um, you know, contribute, by all means, look, look us up. Just give us a call and we'll get you in touch with Joe to talk about the user conference. And just a quick interruption, we are going to resend that email tomorrow. Okay, terrific. Thanks, Joe. It sounds good. So that's kind of uh, 2021 and kind of the high level plans for 2022. Um, for 20, uh, so really wanted to focus on the core values, starting with what are our core values. So the one of the first steps with this um, entrepreneur operating system is really to just sit down and say, who are you? You know, what do you want? You know, not aspirationally, who are you? But you know, go look at the characteristics of everybody you like to work with and uh, go look at the characteristics of the customers that you just love to call and go visit and um, write down those characteristics. And it was quite an exercise and it was more than just you get done with it and you put it on your website. It was, this is who we are and this is who we're going to be. And if you don't uh, kind of adhere to these core values, then maybe it's not a great fit for you to be in this organization or, or even be a, a partner with this organization. So, um, our core values are something that we um, hire our people by, that we uh, reward our people by, and that it, you know, on occasion we say, we gotta let you go, you don't fit our core values. So they're a really big deal for us. Um, and we'll kind of get into those. And just um, for organizations out there that are trying to hire people, the last, actually now it's nine, the last nine, uh, the nine out of nine people that we recently hired, we kind of said, what was the main thing that uh, drew you to our company? And they said it was our core values. They wanted that they're coming from an organization that's not this, and they want to go to an organization that was this, right? And everybody they interviewed in the process with us kind of echoed these things. So we're all talking the same language, we all believe it. And then all of our interviewers, for example, were asking the candidates, hey, tell me, tell me about integrity and what that means to you. So uh, if you're looking to hire, it's hard to hire these days. Um, you might want to focus on core values. It's something really important to you. So um, in the past, we uh, we kind of start these up and the idea was uh, this is uh, what we live by in our company. Like I said, we hire and reward by these. Um, and uh, how that kind of works in our daily workflow is we basically um, will call each other out in a meeting. Hey, I wanted to recognize Alexis for what she just did um, last week. Nobody even asked her to, and she went and stepped up and she built this thing, developed a document and sent it out to this customer and the customer just loved it. And so uh, so in our meetings, we'll call people out and say, I wanna recognize this person for their initiative or their flexibility and what have you. Garrett stayed up over midnight last night just to make sure that 
you know, X, Y, and Z went properly, right? So, and then what we found ourselves doing over time was now we started talking about our customers in the exact same way. You wouldn't, wouldn't believe what Fairfax County did. Um, Fairfax County went above and beyond and they did this thing for us, right? And so we initially uh, started to fo had our core values focus be purely an internal thing. And what we realized was, no, you can't really draw a line that you want strong partnerships only with the people that are that have the same name badge as you, um, or employee uh, badge. It also is the people that we interact with. So we expanded this to include um, folks outside of our organization, and I'm glad you guys can attend to kind of hear what we're thinking of here. So we'll talk about each one, and we'll talk about the nominees, and we'll tell you who we uh, recognize as the winner for the 2022 Core Value Awards. So the first one is strong partnerships. So we, um, what we mean by that is building and maintaining strong partnerships. Um, it's the foundation of our success. So um, we don't want to get a customer for the sake of generating revenue and that's it, right? We wanna learn from that customer, have that customer learn from us. We want them to succeed so that then they go tell other people about it. Um, that's what we think strong partnership is. So our strong partnership award, the nominees we had were uh, Destiny Jackson from uh, uh, George Washington University, just um, you know, just is all in, just uh, learning new stuff, uh, taking advantage of everything the technology has to offer, just done a great job. Um, Fairfax County, Virginia, the Department of Veal Services, so pretty much uh, the, that whole department's kind of all thrown in there. And then uh, amongst the, from our team, uh, Phelps Rogroy, the implementation manager. Um, I think you've all worked with Phelps. And so amongst our team, uh, the winner that we picked for that strong partnership award this year um, is Fairfax County, Virginia. And so uh, congratulations to them. Uh, they are what a partner should be. Um, so they are, uh, they ask of information from us that they might not know. Um, they tell us information that we need to know. Uh, things as simple as, uh, you know, a purchase order gets lost in the system. If you even bring it up just once, there's the whole team scurrying to try to find a way to fix that problem and find out where that problem occurred. So they treat us like uh, we're family and uh, they just uh, are over the top uh, in, uh, you know, supporting us when we have a question and then also they um, accept, the, you know, the kind of the guidance that we give them. And I think they're getting a great use out of the product. So congratulations. I, I see a couple of people on there. Yeah, um, I saw one or two. Um, I, I was I was asked to not mention specific names on there. So but all of DVS over Fairfax County, good job there. We appreciate you. Um, as far as initiative awards, so I think everybody's got a, a a perception of what initiatives, but um, you know, take responsibility for our own roles. Um, so we don't need to be reminded, why didn't you do this? Um, we're proactive and we think outside the box. So there's a lot of different ways to solve a problem. If, uh, you know, we find out the chipping times are uh, gonna be delayed for some reason, and all of a sudden we find out that someone's driving a vehicle down to deliver, to hand deliver equipment to a customer that's 50 miles away. That's, that's some pretty good stuff, right? So that's initiative. So um, I say our whole software development team has stepped up their, um, this whole technology refresh, uh, just meeting the needs of our customers when we have change requests come in uh, is a real big deal. Uh, Mariah Flowers from Iowa uh, DAS. Um, so she's in, a, in the middle of a very large initiative there that uh, takes a lot of um, initiative to kind of keep all the things moving on that side. And then also just the whole group over there at State of Michigan, um, they basically manage uh, sites all over the state, all from their central location or even from work from home locations now. And so our initiative awards, um, the ones that we are recognizing um, today as the winner is Mariah at Iowa DAS. So um, she has to take a, um, you know, basically one of her biggest projects is taking old mainframe technology and kind of getting it all into the modern world and uh, trying to figure out 20 or 30 years worth of rules and processes and uh, all of that stuff. She has to go to so many different people and then try to communicate that back to us. So so we think she's, we call the herd of the cats and done a great job of that. So congratulations to Mariah. Our approachability award, um, one of the things that we, um, for those that have worked with us in the past, uh, hopefully vendors feel the same way, suppliers, um, you know, you want to do business with people that you like. You want to be approachable. So, um, you know, we um, 
back in the day, we made a conscious effort to say that we were the approachable innovators. We want people to feel comfortable interacting with us, that we want them to know us on a personal level as well as a business level. So approachability is a real big part of our core values and um, part of being uh, part of our team, uh, just being friendly and pretentious and welcoming. Um, so for that, we put in uh, Robert Doyle from the Veterans Affairs in uh, Roseburg and uh, Michael Farley from uh, Basin Electric Power uh, Cooperative, and then Tina Talley uh, from Norfolk City Department of Human Services. I think um, all of them have stepped up in one way or the other to communicate, you know, how they, the benefits they get out of using a product like ours. And uh, no, there was nothing in it for them. They just volunteered their time to communicate and, uh, you know, without even um, you know, asking twice and, you know, and question it when we asked them to do it. So terrific. And the winner that we have is um, Michael, Michael Farley from BEPC. So um, he's helped us put together an uh, electronic uh, ebook for us. Um, he's participated in webinars. He's uh, willing to have people call him and say how to use this product. So uh, Michael, appreciate your efforts. I see your, see your little wave off to my, in my periphery here. So um, good job, Michael. I'm glad you could have that. Um, the next one's in our Integrity Award. So uh, uh, we had to pick an uh, agile person on this one. So um, just there's so many examples around my office, you can't even believe it. Uh, trust me, there's no no uh, shenanigans going on here. We're not playing games with any of our clients. Uh, we all will stick up for our clients as much as we'll stick up for ourselves um, in everything we do. So trustworthy, fair, ethical. And um, we expect that from everybody. We'll call each other out if we're not. Um, you know, Jay and Doreen and our tech support team and then Phelps that oversees that whole team. So um, tough decision, but on our integrity ward, we ended up giving that to Phelps. So uh, Phelps is, uh, you, know, you know, these types of people that, you know, he's fixing your screw ups before you even realize you screwed up um, and he's not taking any credit for it. He's just, he's just doing it um, absolutely above board on everything we do. And uh, They'll stick up for any customers, um, anything we're doing for customers at any time. So, uh, and if he can save you money in any way, shape, or form, he'll find a way to do it. So he's a, a congratulations to Phelps on that. Nice job, Phelps. Thank you. I just stole uh, Doreen and Jay's uh, limelight there. So. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. <laughs> yeah. On our, on our flexibility award, so I think we have to be flexible all the time. You know, we don't know what's going to come in in the fleet world. Um, you know, the fleet world things change from, from day to day. Um, you know, at, uh, you know, we are agile, it's in our name, um, but we'll adapt to changing priorities and conditions. Um, and this one, we kind of, uh, Sammy, I don't I didn't see if Sammy had joined us, but uh, Sammy's at University of Tennessee, Knoxville, a customer that's uh, you got some pretty uh, complex fleet needs that's come on um, recently, but um, they've, they've launched Fleet Commander. Um, and then both John and Ian from our uh, internal teams, client success and tech support. And uh, the winner of this one is John. So uh, John came on, John was a customer of ours um, and uh, uh, basically new fleet commander. He knew Motorpool uh, and uh, we knew John well. Uh, There's a great opportunity for him to, to come join us. Um, we didn't steal him, um, he, he, he came join us, um, but uh, Right after we hired them, we had a void in our uh, tech support and implementation team. So we had, we kind of stole John from our client success and he happily went over and uh, joined that other team, took on a completely different job than what we hired him for. We went and uh, he did that for about six months till we got a replacement in the uh, client success team and the, or, I'm sorry, in the implementation team. And then we gave John back. But uh, imagine that you start a new job and then someone says, change in plans. And we have a new job for you. So, um, so we had no choice but to give John this award. So, um, so thanks for, thank you very uh, much. Yeah, thanks for Sammy. Uh, but uh, John, <laughs> John, we owe you that one. So, yep. And then outside of our core value awards, one of the things that we just think is just awesome is um, when we see others in the fleet community that are making the community better. Um, that comes from the associations with NAFA and NCSFA. We see them doing many great things. And then also RTA fleet, you know, some, someone might look at it from the outside and say, 
uh, you know, RTA Fleet is a competitor of ours because they sell a maintenance product and we have a maintenance capability as well. So there are different capabilities for different sizes and different complexities of fleet. So um, in, in one sense, they could be a competitor, but the, the thing that I admire about RTA Fleet is they recognize that, no, we're, we're in the same business, we're trying to help the customer, they should pick the best solution. Um, and then even more so, um, they are very given of their time. Um, so uh, can't say enough about all three of these, that all the team at RTA and then at NCSFA and um, at NAFA, um, just in how much they give back to the fleet community. Um, and so, but we had to pick one of them and the one we chose was NAFA. So we just find, you know, NAFA um, jumped right out there and got back in, uh, held the conference uh, even in the midst of COVID. Um, they hold all types of webinars. They help publish things like the ultimate uh, guide to fleet utilization that I think is a value to everybody. Um, so we just think they've been great. So congratulations and thanks to the whole NAFA team there. And then the last one. Um, so this one, uh, I didn't make it up, but I'm sure happy that I get to do this. So, um, they, you know, basically they come in and said, Ed, you deal with so many different people, the vendors and, and all these different folks. And there's got to be someone who you think just has uh, made our company who we are and, and just made us all better. Um, and then basically they've been a supporter of us. They've um, you know, been a partner to the fleet community. They've just done what needs to be right. Uh, um, you know, just, just done great things for the, the whole fleet world. And uh, that person is Kathy Wellick. So Kathy, I appreciate you um, so much in so many different ways. Um, if you guys have ever interacted with her, you know why her name is on this list. Not that there's others that aren't deserving. Uh, she leads a bunch of different organizations. Um, many of you before you, you know, bought Fleet Commander, um, she might have you know, told you why it was the best thing ever. Um, so, um, or how she uses and things of that nature. So um, she builds a great team. She builds great partners throughout the whole community. So I think it's exactly what the, what the Fleet community needs. And uh, congratulations, Kathy, and thanks for everything that you've offered to us. Um, so uh, that's the last thing I had there as far as the award. So again, um, you know, and any questions you have about EOS or core values or uh, any of the stuff we talked about, um, love to talk to you about it. Um, it's, it's just a, a great thing that in our company and hopefully can help your organization doing something similar to that. Okay. So with that said, um, I don't see any uh, questions that have come uh, in yet, but um, I wanted to just have a couple of different people that use Fleet Commander talk about uh, just a little bit about how they're using it, uh, maybe how things might have changed just a little bit and some innovative things. Um, Aaron, did we get you on? Um, I talked to Aaron a little bit earlier today. And are you unmuted? Hi there, there, I am on. Okay. Terrific. All right. Well, let me set the stage just a little bit. Um, and then I'll let you talk about some some pretty cool stuff. Every now and then I hear about a use of Fleet Commander. I'm like, holy crap, that's awesome. You know, just that's just good stuff. Um, Scott County, Minnesota, um, they have used Fleet Commander for quite a while. And um, if you're a fleet management person, you you always heard me say policy is the number one thing in fleet, right? It's the foundation of everything you do. Years ago, they put a really simple policy in place that said something to the effect of. If you're a county employee and you're driving, you're using a, you need to go somewhere, you have to use the cheapest uh, uh, mode of transportation available. And by the way, that's almost always a motor pool vehicle or a rideshare vehicle, right? So just with that one little policy, it's a total of about 30 words. Um, it basically forced everybody from having these assigned vehicles that were expensive, personal mileage reimbursement, which was expensive, outside rentals, which is expensive, and it forced them to go to this lower cost. I mean, just in personal mileage reimbursement, Aaron, correct me if I'm wrong, but it was about a quarter of a million dollars a year they saved just by telling people to use the vehicles that the, the county already had, right? So it's a really cool story. Um, but recently, during COVID, uh, most of Scott County, uh, a lot of Scott County and, and a lot of the fleet staff even are working from home. And then, uh, so Aaron, can you kind of talk about uh, what you did in conjunction with transit um, during COVID to uh, address the change in needs of the county? Uh, I just think it's the coolest thing ever. Yeah, just by keeping an eye on uh, looking at the data on a regular basis, we ended up selling five of our uh, general pool vehicles just because everybody changed the way they were doing business and there was more people working from home. And then uh, we also uh, um, 
moved a number of vehicles that were in departments and moved those into the general motor pool because of the same thing that uh, there was basically a force force in the change uh, because of the COVID uh, to change everything the way you had to, everybody had to relook at the way they were doing all of their jobs and their daily work activities. So, and currently I still have, uh, like keep analyzing the data and I currently have five other vehicles parked too. So we might end up downsizing some more and we, you know, we just keep looking at the data and the mileage and the vehicle usage. Um, and then uh, transit approaches, they, they had uh, done some research and decided to uh, start a program to offer services to uh, Southern more part of the uh, county outside of the metro area where transit uh, just didn't have bus service for people that had a need for it. So they ended up find, finding some uh, grant funding and they also have uh, quite a large number of volunteer drivers that actually drive two uh, wheelchair accessible vans. And with them, uh, we helped them find different locations for them and uh, we ended up finding uh, our libraries in the county were a very logical place to be honest with you because they were already on the network and they were secure and, and our county employees had access to the building. So we are installing uh, um, three more kiosks on Southern Moore locations. And this also allows our uh, departments, um, our department personnel where they don't have to come all the way up to the main courthouse facility to pick up their vehicles. They can go to vehicles that are closer to their home and do their jobs, which require them on site on-site duties that they have to do. And they also use the, uh, those uh, transit uses those vans for uh, delivering things to people that uh, just can't get out of their homes or are un unavailable. You know, they just don't have any other way to get uh, food or that kind of stuff to them. So volunteers are a huge part of that too. And transit, transit did a real nice job. And, and that I foresee working very, very well. Yeah. So it's, it's it's really quite amazing. So instead of everybody having to drive, you know, into the government center or the main building to get the vehicle, you know, they're all they're they're pretty far away, underserved area. Take the vehicles to them and leave them out by their location. So, um, it, it, for those that haven't ever expanded the use of Fleet Commander in, in the software, it's as easy as going in and saying click, add a new site, and then move some vehicles over to that location. So the process of setting it up in the software is probably a ten minute process at most. Uh, and then, like Aaron said, they had a network connection there. Um, they had access to the building, so they put key box and kiosks there, and now they're, that's accessible to people that are working from home in those areas, and then as well as volunteers um, that uh, you know, provide handicap accessible uh, resources, and then also the, the food delivery. So that, that's just pretty cool use of it. I've heard of a few other uh, innovative uses, but that's neat. And then a the nice thing about that, um, Aaron, some people might say, how'd you pay for that? And I think, uh, a grant, uh, Transit found a grant um, to cover that. Because quite honestly, they, they, it just seems like they could not uh, quickly or cost effectively deliver services any other way. So that's sort of the grant to prove that they could provide the services that way. So pretty cool stuff. So anything else to add on that? So very innovative on your guys' part and uh, glad you're supporting it. Quick uh, comment on the policy. We did set up a policy, which you had mentioned earlier, and. And part of that policy, we have a bunch of uh, requirements when anybody goes to use a vehicle, any of the county vehicles for the first time, and they have to sign off on a number of different things in the software. But all of our uh, reimbursement is done through the Agile software. So basically, um, if a user is going to get a reservation, if there's a vehicle, they kind of have to explain why they didn't use a pool vehicle if there was one available, because it, literally they have to click on this box or that box in order to move forward with their mileage reimbursement. So it works very, very well. Right. Yeah, there's actually an expense reimbursement module built into Fleet Commander that requires that you prove <laughs> that through the through the system that, yeah, here's the, here's the reservation that I could not get because there was no vehicle available. So good stuff, cool. Thanks for sharing that, Aaron. I think that's great. Uh, Kathy, I don't know if you had a few words to talk about kind of how you're using the system during COVID and just for those that might not yet be using the system, just some of the benefits that you're getting out of it. Thank you again for always contributing and whatever we ask you to contribute to, it's awesome. No problem. And thank you for the award. It's, it's pretty easy to be able to work with each other because the core values align. Um, there's a lot of people around this room that are my fleet family that I see on this screen. So um, 
it's been a great tool during COVID. You know, in the beginning, we were able to do so many different things by setting our kiosk hours to different hours to maintain um, the cleanliness of the vehicles, allow us to have more cleaning time in between reservations. Um, we had some departments turn cars in and start to use pool vehicles, which obviously helps us for um, cost savings and being able to reassign uh, those vehicles to um, people that need them for everyday use or to be able to go ahead and not replace some of our vehicles. Um, I think one of the key things you pointed out today too is the only constant is change and that is what I really value about this company and partnership that we have is that your staff are always willing to listen and to help and to improve the system. That's why we left our old system. They they had no desire to improve a system or make it better. Whereas your staff are always looking forward to what can we do to make it better? How can we help? Uh, we'll put that in the notes for the next integration. So I think it's pretty neat that you're able to um, call that number and be able to uh, reach out to these other people. And I think it's really kind of unique timing too. I, um, Mariah I see is on here and I have one of Mariah's customers in here for us for the first time. He's getting, he's using our services too uh, for the first time. And that's one of those things, you know, you just build these partnerships back and forth. Um, we're both state entities and so forth. And um, so however we can help each other, uh, that's what we can do. And I'm always happy to help any of you if you have questions with how we do things. There's just not one perfect answer for billing or anything like that. It's the fact that uh, you can customize what you need and you have great staff to help you. And I guess another thing too, I just, I love the flexibility. I'm on call 24 seven for our fleet and I can fix problems pretty much from anywhere. I was um, in the airplane on the tarmac the other day in Arizona and I got a call and I was able to fix it on my cell phone and take care of the person. Um, you got these 30 degree temperatures here in Iowa, which some of you probably live in much warmer places than I. Um, but by a flip of a couple buttons, I can change that car that didn't start to a, a different car and so forth with the kiosk and, and not have to be present. So it's been really good with uh, COVID and allowing flexibility for both customers and for staff. So thank you for what all you guys do and for partnering with all of us. Yeah. Kathy used to have to drive in every time she had to help someone. So she, she really likes the software. So, And then Amanda, appreciate you joining. Didn't know if uh, you had anything to add. Um, you always got some great insights into uh, things going on at the university and how, how you use Fleet Commander. Don't know that I have really anything more to add innovative or um, anything in that realm, but just echo everything that's been said already about Agile and the flexibility that it provides for us in situations like COVID. And as we come back to some folks being on campus and doing things differently, um, the ability to analyze the data that we've already collected in the past and make those decisions to right size our fleet um, and be reactive to our customer needs has just been such a blessing through all of this. Um, we've been recently adding new outside vendor options for types of vehicles that we don't carry in our motor pool um, and building those new relationships with vendors and using Agile to, to monitor those requests and fulfill them. Um, and I just wanna give you guys kudos again for the core values um, that you've displayed and how well they align with the partners that you choose. Um, and we're so happy to be a partner of Agile Fleet. Excellent. Th thank you, Amanda, and uh, Kathy and Aaron as well. So good stuff. Um, we, we love interacting with you guys. So, um, so I don't see any other feedback in the chat. Um, by all means, we're you know, easy to get in touch with. I just want to kind of wrap up on some of these notes. Um, so I would say, you know, if you're kind of going into doing the same thing in fleet and even the same things that maybe you did pre-COVID, it's like, I, I would just encourage you to make some change. It drives me nuts to see utilization rates that are so low. I've seen them like lower than 5% and fleet managers say, nope, 
uh, we're good. You know, don't want to sell them because I'll never get another vehicle again. So I would urge you to make the change. And if we can help you, um, in you know, get, be more comfortable with that, uh, making those decisions, um, we'll tell you how other people have done it, and but um, and we'll get and we'll help you understand your data. Um, definitely share your stories with us um, so that we can share them with other people, or we'll give you a venue for sharing those. Uh, definitely complete the surveys that we send you. So our client success team sends out surveys to get feedback, and we do listen to it. Um, we've got a, a, a mandatory meeting tomorrow for some of the feedback we got on the survey. So we'll figure out where we fell short, and we'll fix that problem, right? So that's why we send out the survey, so they might get repetitive. But any feedback you can give us is um, is good feedback. Um, we want to know what your priorities are. Um, we want to make introductions for you. So if there's other fleets like yours, maybe you can talk to them. A utility space, maybe you want to go talk to some other utility customers and ask them how did they get away with, uh, you know, using bucket trucks or lending them out to somebody else. Um, you know, maybe we can just introduce you to somebody that might, um, you know, be able to help you out. And um, absolutely attend the conference. Um, if we uh, can make that happen this year, I would say, um, complete that survey um, and get that into us so that we we can get those uh, travel plans done. So um, thank you for the feedback in the chat there and um, appreciate those that contributed for this meeting and um, thanks for everything that you guys have uh, done, everybody on the call has done for us uh, as a company and uh, hopefully we can serve you uh, equally as well in the coming year. So thanks again for attending. Have a great day. Thank you. Yep. Thanks.